гость из Израиля, суперафилиат, который закончил небезызвестную израильскую армию, пришел, залез в интернет, понял, что в Гемплинге есть деньги, стал раскачивать эту нишу, потом открыл даже свою веб-студию э, в Израиле, которая специализировалась на дизайне SEO, но понял, что в Гемплинге денег больше, закрыл студию и углубился в эту нишу. Именно про эту нишу нам сейчас и расскажет наш следующий гость. Давайте поприветствуем Аден Гендлер. Угу. Не вышел еще. Ты берешь? Я. Угу. Здравствуйте. Я, меня зовут Аден. Извините, я говорю по-русски. Это самый большой вопрос, что я имею. Так что это самый большой вопрос, что я имею в виду. Tell you guys about my affiliate experience. Yeah, focus. So that's the pretty much the concept of the, uh, the presentation. How affiliate marketing gave me freedom and an answer. So I'll start with the, a little bit of my life story. Um, after the Israeli army. Perfect. So after the Israeli army, uh, I didn't have any options of what to do. I didn't have any degree or any other opportunity except working at a restaurant or at a call center for a mobile company. And dealing with angry Israelis on a daily basis wasn't my dream job. So I decided to do some manual labor at an aluminum factory. It was an interesting experience, even though I decided I'm never going to work in an industrial area like that ever again. In any case, I did that, I think, for a year or so. After that, a friend of mine was working for an SEO company. Obviously, it's Israel, so an SEO gambling company. It was still gambling and not gaming. And I remember my first day there. I came at 10 in the morning. The manager gave me a simple task to do, which is uh, go over every site poss possible and get their contact details so we can contact them and exchange links. And I was sitting there for six hours, no break, didn't go to the toilet, didn't go to eat. You know, it's the first day when I'm pressed, it's my first office, real job. And then after six hours, the manager came and I showed him what I did and said, really? I could do that in 10 minutes. It wasn't very motivating. I remember going downstairs and the sun was setting. I said to myself, fuck my life. This is what I'm gonna do all my life, grinding and barely making a living to do what I want, to have any freedom to go on vacation and to buy what I want. So that was the first time that I figured out that maybe working for someone else wasn't the best idea for me. So I did that for about a year. And from there, me and a guy I met at the, the SEO company, we opened a web design and SEO company, looking for clients. Mm. It started pretty well. I remember we nailed our first client. I think he gave us a retainer of $2,000 or $3,000 a month. It was amazing for us. I thought, wow, we're our own, uh, our own, our own bosses. We're making money. But then we figured out that having clients mm -hmm. is not the best thing ever. You have clients that pay you, let's say, $1,000 or $2,000 a month, and they feel like they can call you at one morning or send you a million emails to change the, the font from this or put a pic or increase the pixel from two to three and change the colors. So even being my own boss, by the way, I call this presentation becoming a business boy, not a businessman, because I think we were not real businessmen at that level at that time of, uh, of our lives. So then we discovered, we discovered affiliate marketing. Um, pretty funny how we found it. My partner found a post on Digital Point, the forum, if any of you still know it or use it, of a guy pretty much making a post saying, sign up for my affiliate link to Zugal. It was an old affiliate network in 2008, I think. Sign up through my affiliate link, and I'll teach you how to make money online. So we did. And uh, he taught us pretty much to buy traffic on Google AdWords. We didn't even know about AdWords. Uh, the offer, I think, was simple pin submits, $120, $120 payout, 
think it was baby stuff, pretty much legit. So I think we spent about three thousand dollars till we started to make a profit. It took us about a month. And after that, wow, we made a hundred dollars profit a day. It was amazing. And I remember telling my partner, I think that's the way to go. Why do we need clients? Why do we need to, to chase clients? Why do we need to suffer from them calling us one morning and knowing us with endless emails, even though we agreed on something? And, uh, well, he didn't agree with me, let's just say that. He continued with the web design. And funny story, by the way, after two years, he closed the web design and became an affiliate himself. But I, just, I continued with affiliate marketing. I became a one-man operation. I learned HTML by myself, learned Photoshop, fireworks, actually. Created my first website and launched my first campaign on AdWords. I remember getting the first lead. I think it was then a different offer. It was 80 cents. It was amazing. It was like, there's money online. I can do it. So that started pretty well. And then I think I found the offer at a different affiliate network for double the payout. And then it was amazing. The money started rolling in. Amazing day. I remember the day, I think it was, I woke up at 7 or 8 a.m. Israel time, checking stats. Of course, stats were US ESD, Eastern Time. And I saw, wow, oh, 1,000. Double check. Is anything, maybe something is wrong here. It doesn't make sense. Even though the scaling was slow, but it was pretty much moving from 300, 400, 500 to 1,000. I remember that feeling, I think it was pretty much the best day of my life. Which of course leads to Oligarch's lifestyle. I think that it's, it's every affiliate, I don't think affiliate, I think every human being starts making money quickly. And you know, uh, starting to make a thousand dollars a day when a few months ago you were making maybe two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Everyone goes crazy for a short period of time. The only, the only difference with, with, between affiliates which are one hit wonder, which you see the show for one year and the next year they, they vanish, is you understand, okay, I'm making an insane amount of money for a 24, 25 year old guy who's just working from his own house, has no overhead, has no employees, has no, no, no office even. Do you understand? Yeah, calm down, Tiger. You don't really have uh, your own business. But um, it was a good time. I did some mistakes that I won't repeat again. I remember buying, uh, wanting to buy like, a bullshit Mercedes EMG for an absurd price. But then, of course, my Jewish father said that if you do that, you're not my son anymore. So I bought my first apartment, which gave a pretty good return instead of an AMG. In any way, so those were the good times. It lasted for a few months. But then, of course, Yeah. Um, happens. I mean, even if you don't go to zero, you if you you go down. In my case, going back to zero happened because I got my first Google slap. It was in 2009, 2008, I think. Domain got flagged. It was pretty much just a domain with landing pages, no content, no nothing. It's amazing. It ran for so long, but went back to zero uh, again. Built a new domain, went to a sale offer, another lead, went back to 1k even a bit more, but eventually slap again, slap again, account banned. Alright, so pretty much that's something with the volatility of affiliate uh, business. I mean, pretty much you're stuck between the traffic source and the advertiser, and you don't have much control. And if Google or whatever traffic source you're buying, talking Google because it was the old days, are changing their policies, there's nothing you can do. Your entire business is built on them. And if your entire revenue stream goes from them, then you go back to nothing. And if you have a lifestyle of an oligarch, like I said, then you're pretty much, um, how do you say, left. Next. So how to deal with the volatility of an affiliate business? So pretty much how I figure it out is diversification. I mean, don't just run on Google, don't just run on one vertical, one niche. Do pops, do, let, let's, let's take it today, do pops, do mobile, do Facebook. Facebook started at that time, but eventually you can't do it all by yourself. And 
that's what that's what goes from going to from a high paying job to a business. Because it doesn't matter how much money you make, even if it's like ten thousand dollars a day, as long as it's only you doing it, it's working from your home. Eventually, you can never quit. You can't just go on vacation and let just uh, complain, run wild. I mean, all of us press F5 every two minutes to check stats. So that goes through to, from a high paying job to building a business. So what we did is pretty much hiring people. Hiring people so we can run numerous traffic sources, run different offers, and greater diversification. So if the, if the compliance or the policies of a certain traffic source uh, changes, we don't go back to zero. Yes, our revenue goes down, but we still we're still pushing we're still pushing revenue and we're still making a profit. Of course, you have the overhead of employees, and it is a risk. It is a mindset change because, as I said, when you buy yourself, okay, you go back to zero, no harm done. You start living on an egg and bread instead of caviar and champagne, but still. Now, networking. I think networking is one of the most important things, and there's a quote from uh, from a movie that I really like. It's about it's a movie. It's called Margin Call. It's about Wall Street brokers. And there's a moment where uh, where the big billionaire, the CEO, comes and he says, "There are three ways to make money in this business: be the first, be smarter than the rest, or cheat." So if you compare it to affiliate marketing, cheating is clothing, I guess. Uh, being creative could be a lot of different things, and being the first. And being the first, I'll give a few examples. For example, if you start running casual dating or adult dating in 2011, where you would have paid the ad network, for example, like Exoplex, five cents, and your EPCs for Australian offers would be 30, 35 cents, 40 cents. Easy money. Even the most junior media buyer has no clue about optimization can make money. It's just so much easier. And there are a lot of different examples, like if you want to go even more shadier, if uh, you, want, you want to talk about uh, tech support, paper call. In the beginning, everyone could make money. Also, it became slow. You could run a plug rush and just kill it with the most simple landing pages and minimal optimization. So that's why, by the way, that's a very important thing, which is great that you all come here. I was a pretty, it took me a while to understand that because I'm kind of a geek. I like talking to people, but you have to do it. And the final progression in my affiliate career, technology. And why do you think technology is the most important thing and what will give you the quantum leap? And let's talk figures. Let's assume you're making, let's say, 300k profit a year. Excuse me. 300k profit a month. That means you're making about, let's say, 4 million a year. It will take you 10 years of this steady profit to reach 40 million. With, however, with technology, if you have a great product and you're building really great stuff, you can be bought out and you can make this insane quantum leap in something that the field marketing will never give you. And by the way, talking about 3 million profit a year, that's like the, I think, at least from my experience, I'm sure. I'm sure there are people in this audience who are killing it, or I don't know, maybe making 10, 12 million profit a year. Very rare. Like I think if you talk about in SDM, about I think that there was a there was a post that say what is a super affiliate? A super affiliate is a guy technically who makes a million profit a year, free taxes. And those are very numerous. And in our industry, which is it just it's just getting harder and harder. If for example, 10 years ago, a uh, hundred people would have tried to reach 1k profit a day. Maybe 20 would succeed. I think today, with the saturation, and you can see, conferences are getting bigger. More and more people are, are figuring out this affiliate marketing business. Then today, if a hundred people would try to reach 1k, I think maybe five would succeed. And I don't know if you read, the, uh, if you saw the latest Bloomberg article with Robert Greene. Our industry is becoming mainstream. People are, uh, the mainstream is trying to hear about all the pills of meats, all the brain pills, all the shady stuff that we do. So I think it's just getting harder and harder, and as we see it, technology is the best thing. So, if I'm already here, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the uh, two products that are here. Let's start with the optimizer. The optimizer is, uh, it's pretty much a tool that, all things, the optimizer pretty much came from tools that we built while being a field that would help us buy traffic. 
But eventually we decided that the tool is pretty much mature enough that we can launch it to other people. Pretty much, there are two versions. There's the native tool and there's the mobile tool. The native tool pretty much uh, integrates to all the main uh, native head networks such as Red Content, Content Head, MGID, Outbrain, Tabula, Gemini is coming, and it integrates to the tracker. So volume, drive, Imobi, Venom, which I heard is pretty big in Russia, and I have one, of course, in Santa Cruz, and there are other track I, I forgot. Pretty much the optimizer integrates, you have everything in one dashboard. You don't need to check your own, you don't need to check your tracker, you need to check uh, the ad network, everything is in one place. You see the EPC, the, the CPM, everything. For example, on RevCodent, if you're running, you cannot see the CPM unless you use the API. The optimizer, you can, then you can pretty much decide on how to bid. Uh, of course, you have some crazy rules, but I won't make you too much. The next product that I'm launching, we are launching with our great partners, is Run Native, which is our own native ad network. Unlike so many others, we are not like a DSP brokering arbitrage or doing all that stuff. All the publishers are ours. We control the traffic, the technology is us. And uh, if I might say, it's pretty awesome. But still growing, so give it a few months and we'll see. And I see my time is out. So that's it. Спасибо большое.